everyone, my name is Kate Kaltoff and welcome to a Stamping to Share video. Today we are using the Floral Boutique stamp set along with the detailed floral thinlets. We are finding our inspiration in the Find Your Inspiration annual catalog from Stampin' Up! which started June 1st, 2016 and goes through May 31st of 2017. And the Floral Boutique is actually found on pages 76 and 77. And so you'll see a bunch of samples made with it. And then also um, you can see all of the different products that coordinate with this, with this boutique suite. And so let me show you those products and what we're going to be using on our card. This is the Floral Boutique stamp set. You can purchase it as a bundle with the detailed floral thinlets. I'll be going over in detail exactly how to use this thinlet and how to use this little piece over here. Then we uh, also have the Floral Boutique Designer Series paper. You'll notice that on one side of the paper there's a lot of white and blue designs. And then on the other side, it's the same thing, white and blue, except you'll see that the dominant color is blue. Just love that. Then we have um, some new Baker's Twine and we have a set of washi tape. So would you like to see the card that we're going to make? I'm sure you would. This is the beautiful card. And we are actually using everything in the product suite with the exception of the designer series paper because in place of the designer series paper, I decided to go ahead and use washi on my card. So there's washi on the bottom third of the card. And then this, this section is where we're using the detailed floral thinlets. The inside panel of the card also is just very simple and beautiful, and it uses washi at the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and get started making this card, and I'll show you step by step how to create it. The first thing that you're going to need is some Knight of Navy cardstock. This is cut at five and a half by eight and a half, and then I've scored it at four and one fourth. We're going to go ahead and fold along the score line, give that a good press so that it will lie flat for us while we work with it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the inside panel of our card. So to do that, we're going to need a 4 by 5 and 1 4 inch piece of Whisper White. I've gone ahead and just to save a little time, I've added some washi at the top and some washi below. So all we need to do really is stamp our sentiment. So I'm opening up a Knight of Navy ink pad and then I'm going to ink up this inside sentiment and put it right here. Just beautiful. Then to put this into our card, we're gonna use a little snail at the top. We really don't need to put it all down so tight because that kind of, you kind of lose a little bit of the elegance when you put it in so tight to your card. Most cards, especially wedding cards, are very loose and flowing and, and it just adds so much to the elegance of your piece. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, start working with the outside panel. The base of the outside panel is Whisper White and I have this cut at 4 by 5 and 1 fourth. and we're going to start layering our washi tape on this. So the washi tape that I have is that Floral Boutique coordinating washi tape and we, I have it on a shower ring. That's just a great way to keep the sets of your washi together. Um, and you can use it right from the shower ring. So we're just going to put this down here at the bottom of our card, just lining up these, this bottom edge on both sides so that we don't want to have any white showing through at the bottom because it would will really show through against this navy background. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'll just trim this even with the edge of my card. I'll do that on both sides and then we're ready for the next layer. The next layer is this wider washi tape. I'm just going to set this in right here. It provides a beautiful contrast and again we can take our scissors and just trim this even. You could wrap this around as well. I just think it's a little bit more finished looking if it's trimmed even and then you just burnish it down with your finger and that will prevent it from from escaping or, or lifting up on you. The next step is the washi tape that has little lines in it. Again we're just setting it right here on this card just lining it right up with the washi tape above it. We'll do a little trimming again and then we are going to add the final layer of washi tape on the front of this card. 
And again, set this right here over the top of the last layer of washi. Flip it over and trim even with our edges. Our washi taping is complete. Now the next thing we're going to do is some work on the Big Shot machine. So I'm going to set this all aside for a minute and we're going to get the Big Shot machine into the picture because I'm actually going to show you step by step how to do this. So this is the detailed floral and we're going to be using this piece and then also this piece in our card today. So I'm going to take these and set them aside and then the first thing that we're going to do once we have our Big Shot machine in the picture is I'm going to show you a new platform. All of the Big Shots now that Stamping Up sells is going to come with this Big Shot platform and the thin die adapter. There's no more flipping like there used to be with our old platforms. This plain platform right here is meant to be used with embossing folders and then it also has a built-in shim so that when you're using it with thinlets you won't find that the center area of your thinlet will not cut out. This shim is built in so that your, your thinlets will cut cleanly all the way through. The next thing you need is your thin die adapter when you're using thinlets and framelets. Now this particular piece, actually these two particular pieces, one is a thinlet and one is kind of a framelet. The framelet, which is this piece, which is cutting out a stamped image or cutting out um, an image that you line up like this, you need to be sure that you do not use it with a precision plate. If you use it with a precision plate, because of the pressure on the precision plate, you may find that a, that a long, thin framelet piece like this could warp. So you want to make sure that when you're using your precision plate, you're only using it with thinlets. And how do you know what a thinlet is? A thinlet will be a die that has many, many little dots. That's what you're going to use to release the paper with your die brush. And so um, that's a good way to distinguish them. Plus, if you happen to notice, in the Stampin' Up! catalog, on page 194, you'll find that everything that uses the precision plate, or that actually works the best with the precision plate, is done up in a light pink color. So all of these um, dies in this area, you are recommended to use them with the precision base plate for the detailed images. Now if there's some some dies that don't have the detailed images like this where they're not full of the little um, dots then you want to be sure that you know you are using the regular magnetic plate setup which I'll show you. I'll show you so don't fear. So we're going to go ahead and get this all set up. So as you noticed I had my base plate then I have the thin die adapter and because we're using a thinlet, we're going to go ahead and put on the precision plate. Then I have my Knight of Navy paper. This is cut at 2 and 1 fourth by 4 inches. And I'm going to set my thinlet right here so that all three sides are um, equal. So the bottom and the two sides have equal distance because this is going to be a beautiful layer on my card and I want to make sure that everything is equal distance. So I'm just going to take a post-it note to hold that into place. Since I'm not using a magnetic plate, this could slide around and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead, use a post-it note, then you'll notice that one of these plates here that I'm using for the top, whenever you're using a precision plate, set aside one of your cut plates to use just with the precision plate. That plate is going to warp and that's natural. That that happens because this plate, this precision plate, the reason it cuts so precisely is there's absolutely no give. But something has to give when you're putting this many pounds of pressure on. So it's going to be your cut plate, which is going to cause it to warp. So I've just gone ahead and I've cut it. Notice I only have to run it through one time. So let me show you. I'll get this out of the way. Let me show you what I need what we'll do next. So we're going to remove the post-it note and then I'm going to bring my die brush into the picture. So I just have my die brush and foam pad in a wood stamp case. Then I'm going to take my die brush and run it over the top and this is going to help me release everything 
from the dye. You'll notice now the dye just um, released from the paper. And then almost all of these little pieces just, just fall out magically. And the reason that they all fall out so beautifully is because we've used that new Big Shot platform along with the thin dye adapter and the precision plate. And that's how easy it is. It's just magic. One time through and run it through with the dye brush and it's ready to go. So now I'm going to bring the Big Shot back into the picture again. And because this set has a framelit in it, we need to change up our platform. So I'm going to remove this entirely. And what I'm going to bring into the picture now is my normal magnetic plate that I've been using for a long, long time. And, and if you're a long time crafter, you probably have a magnetic plate too. Then you're going to use just your normal cutting plate that you use with your magnetic platform. Then you're going to put your die that we've just cut and we're going to set that onto the magnetic platform and then we can go ahead and just fit this in so that it fits perfectly around the cut images. And once we have that in there, the magnetic plate is going to hold that die in place. Then I can go ahead and put my cut plate over the top and then we're just going to run it through the Big Shot machine like so. And this is the normal way you would set it up when you're just using a framelit, which is what this is. So there we have our beautiful cut framelit piece. And so I know that was a lot of instruction, but I wanted to take the time to really go over in detail the difference between framelits and thinlets and the different ways to put them on your Big Shot to get the best cut possible. So now let's go ahead and we'll bring our base paper that we're going to use on the front of our card back into the picture. Remember we've done the washi tape, so now all we have to do is set this in here just like this. It will be beautiful. So to put that on, I'm going to use a little multi-purpose liquid glue, and I'm just going to tap it on into these little bit wider areas on my thinlet paper piece here. You don't need a tremendous amount of glue. This will stick very well with just a few taps of glue. So then you're going to set it on here so that it's just flush with that last layer of washi tape. And then just give it a press and it is all in place. The next thing we're going to do is a little stamping. So here is my Knight of Navy ink. And then I'm going to take my congratulations stamp, ink that up with the Knight of Navy. And we're going to set this right here at the top of the card. And remember, when you're stamping, it's just straight down and straight up. You don't want to rock your stamp. And then, you'll, then you will be able to get a really nice image like that. And then finally, for the finishing touch, we're going to bring in the Knight of Navy Baker's Twine. I'm just going to bring some out here. We're going to do two loops around. And then we can go ahead and just give it a nice little tie. So what I do is I like to just tie it in a knot. That way it'll hold itself in place. And then if for some reason the bow would come untied, um, the thread will still stay nicely in place on your card. And then you just tie it into a little bow. And then we can trim up our edges here. And then we're ready to go ahead and put this onto the front of our card. So here's our card front. And we're going to do this with a couple of dimensionals. So I'm going to flip it around and add my dimensionals. All right, the dimensionals are added. You can see I just did four. You just want a little breathing room, especially when you have some twine running through the back side. So we're going to put this centered in on the front of our card. And our card is complete. So there we have the card we've just made. Here's the card I had created in advance. And I hope you've enjoyed this very thorough tutorial on how to create this card as well as how to use your Big Shot machine with the new um, Stampin' Up! platform and the thinlets and the, and the framelits. Have a great day and thank you so much for stopping by Stamping to Share. I truly appreciate you. If you'd like to place a product order, be sure to visit my blog at www.stampingtoshare.com. Bye-bye.